Hello and welcome to my channel. Here I review new movies and television shows. Today, I want to talk about a new movie called The Super Mario Bros. It is a family-friendly animated action-adventure film from Nintendo and Illumination Entertainment. It was written by Matthew Fogel and was tri-directed by Aaron Horvath, Michael Jelinek, and Pierre Leduc. The story follows Mario, voiced by Chris Pratt, a plumber from Brooklyn, who recently started a new business with his brother Luigi, voiced by Charlie Day. A water main bursts in Brooklyn, and the two try to play a hero by fixing it. In the process, they fall down a pipe. The two are separated during the fall and wind up in a strange new land. Luigi ends up being captured and it's up to Mario to save him. With the help of iconic characters like Peach, voiced by Anya Taylor-Joy, Toad, voiced by Michael Keegan Key, and Donkey Kong, voiced by Seth Rogen, Mario takes on Bowser, played by Jack Black, and the Koopa Army. To start off my review, I want to say that this movie is a Nintendo fan's nostalgic wet dream. It's filled with references and callbacks to the original games in the form of songs, iconic dialogue, characters, and a ton of visual references. If you are a longtime fan of Nintendo, there are a lot of easter eggs here for you to enjoy. The story is a fairly simple and easygoing hero's journey. It starts off by showing Mario at a low point, having spent the last of his money on his new business and failing his first job, and slowly builds him up over the course of the film. It introduces a few different characters and does a great job of fleshing them out in record time. It doesn't give them all that much to do individually, but it did manage to make everyone in the film feel like a unique and interesting personality. At times, it can feel a little rushed, skipping from place to place in an instant, but generally, the film does a good job of pacing itself. It sets everything up and then sets off on the journey, hits a few highs, reaches a low point, and then finishes with a grand finale. It's an exciting story filled with lots of emotion, humor, and cool looking action sequences, but it's also a little nonsensical. Plot points just happen and there's no explanation for how most of the time. By the end, I was filled with questions that could break the story, but I ignored most of them because it was fun. The cast is filled with celebrity voices, but there's a good mixture of them who put on an exaggerated or new voice for this film. Generally, they do a good job of selling the story, emotions and all. Chris Pratt as Mario was surprisingly good. He uses a modified version of his own voice with a little bit of an accent, and he really nails the emotions. He and Charlie Day had a great brotherly love, and his rivalry with Donkey Kong was hilarious. Pratt's comedic timing is on point. Jack Black as Bowser plays a bit of a comedic trope. He's the head-over-heels-in-love villain who just doesn't understand how repulsive he is to the princess. Black plays the comedic elements in an exaggerated way, and it makes Bowser feel like a larger-than-life caricature. At times, he's terrifying. At times, he's a sweet artist, singing into the void about his love for Peach. Black is highly entertaining and manages to make the character feel iconic. Charlie Day, Anya Tiller-Joy, and Seth Rogen are given less time than Pratt or Black, with each of them getting a moderate amount of dialogue and time in their sections before being relegated to the background. They each use their own voices and do a solid job of the emotions and the comedy. Visually, the animation is brilliant. The backgrounds are highly detailed and filled with easter eggs for the audience. The characters are in-depth recreations of the original designs, and they use this magical world to show off the amazing aesthetic of this adventure. The action sequences range from platforming sections where Mario runs, jumps, and slides through an obstacle course to melee-style fights and Rainbow Road Kart Wars. It's all incredibly well done with lots of energy and creativity put into the action, and a ton of visual humor to round out the edges. They do a good job of capturing the emotions of the characters as well by giving them exaggerated facial features. It leads to fantastic moments where you can see what they're thinking just by the look on their face, no words are necessary. Sound-wise, the film is filled with both iconic original tracks and background instrumentals made by remixing old Nintendo music from the games. It was clearly crafted by an effective team because it follows the emotions and flow of the scenery to perfection, and it uplifts and amplifies the emotions like the biggest loudspeaker you have ever heard. I loved the remixed versions of Nintendo classics and I can't wait to add half of them to my personal playlist. The soundtrack made a huge impact in the movie by coming together with the visuals and story to create cinematic moments and it hits on nostalgia vibes in a big way. Overall, I found the movie to be incredibly well done across the board with lots to offer in just about every section. It's got great visuals, an amazing soundtrack, good voice acting, and a fun story. The only real downsides are a lack of depth in the story and a risk aversion that makes the film feel a little too safe. They relied pretty heavily on nostalgia and while they did it tastefully, it just doesn't do anything new. The visuals are well done, but nothing is unique or experimental here. The same can be said of the soundtrack. I went in expecting pretty much what I got, a lighthearted journey with a lot of nostalgia bait. 
It works, and I enjoyed it. 8 out of 10. Remember, those are just my thoughts in the film. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Wow! It's me, Mario. I'll see you later.